in that video I made the other day where I was dealing with that young rattlesnake who had been bumped on the road and had the lacerations on her stomach. Um, in that video, I bitched a little bit, complained a little bit about how my options are legally restricted when I come into a situation like that. I'm not actually, like I'm, uh, my permit for working with these snakes has me picking them up to relocate them um, and doing that within an hour of the pickup, right? Like releasing bef within an hour. Um, doesn't really allow me to take snakes home and doctor them and that kind of thing, right? So, you know, it's a, uh, that's a tough ethical issue for me to deal with every time I come into a situation with an injured snake. And, and sometimes I opt to, um, if I think I can do it, I opt to help the snake, uh, even though it puts me at a little bit of legal risk. And one of the commenters <laughs> had, you know, commiserated with me basically and said, isn't it a shame that, you know, that the, that the laws restrict that there's laws restricting you from, from helping these animals. And, you know, I, I thought about it because, you know, for me, of course, it's very easy to be attracted to that sentiment that, um, that it's unfortunate that there are, you know, these legal apparatus in the, in the way, these regulations around how um, we encounter our, or how we handle our encounters with wildlife and that kind of thing. But thinking about it, you know, I have to say it's important that we have regulations because our society is a very large society and it's becoming more and more linked. And um, I think we're moving toward, you know, being, being uh, earthlings and globalized as a you know, I think not too distantly in the future we will have a globally run society. Maybe some different cultural variations, but even as it goes now, um, we're <laughs> somewhat um, monocultural around the world, right? And and more increasingly that way, and um, and the interweb helps that along significantly. But in any case, my, my point being, there's a lot of us with a lot of different ideas and some of that needs to be regulated, right? <laughs> you know, when it comes to dealing with the critters and stuff, like there's a lot of guys who would love to just kill the rattlesnakes um, who, uh, that they encounter in their yards who only don't do that because they know that there's legal apparatus there that that tells them not to, hey? There are, there are plenty of people out there who would be um, just <clears throat> trying to make some income off of, uh, off of the plants and animals that make up the diversity of our environment where, you know, they were, they were, people would overhunt, overfish, over everything, right? Over harvest, um, who are, <laughs> our environment would suffer hugely, I think, if we had no regulations. But, okay, that's one thing. These people who are, who are trying to use the, um, the, the other species, you know, for their personal kind of selfish gain, right? Um, the other thing, though, is people who are trying to help animals, like in the case with my situation. Um, coming across an injured animal, what do you do? Here, I think regulations are important as well because we should have an agreement about what we do in those situations. Otherwise, we get people who are ignorant of what to do or even what they're observing and who make decisions that are deleterious to the animals 
out of an attempt to help. Like, you know, take for instance that couple the other year that the media made an example of in Yellowstone who found the, the bison calf and decided <laughs> that it had been abandoned and, and put it into the back of their vehicle to haul it away as a rescue operation um, only to be told by people who know the bison in the park that uh, they're just because you find one like that doesn't mean it's abandoned you know it's almost like a a deer fawn you come across them quite often alone while their mother's out foraging and stuff they leave them hidden I don't know what the how you know what the situation for all I know um, the official response is that don't do that but the reality was that that bison calf was orphaned for all I know you know but there are these kind of situations like every year I get calls from people who have either picked up fledgling birds or they've, they're observing fledgling birds and they want me to come pick it up uh, because it's on the ground <laughs> and vulnerable and I have to tell them no just that's where that's what it, all the birds go through that right they have to go through that stage as part of their development um, and yeah they're vulnerable and that's the way life is with them at that moment but you you take them up from that yeah you can uh, you can help raise them to adulthood but they're gonna miss some of the stuff that they need some of the developmental stuff that they need the learning from their mothers and, and all of that best to leave them be and um, they're gonna be fine right so people with good intentions can inner you know intervene in the lives of animals to the animals detriment very easily so there has to be regulations but are the are the current regulations regarding the that kind of activity adequate in, in that respect I think we've got a long way to develop yet um, because the way that the current regulations are, are are shaped is such that it discourages people from intervening in um, emergency situations with wildlife um, and asks rather that that they go you know that they refer that situation to an expert at the very least leave it alone to let nature play its course so to speak that's what that's always a, a good excuse um, how about you let nature play its course next time one of your kids needs to go to the hospital right no but, but that's that's part of the discourse around human nature relations in the in the Western paradigm is that um, there has to be this there there should be this separation between us and nature and so um, there should be a, a kind of an ethics like that they have in the parks of non-interference to to some respect right um, <laughs> and so when you come across injured wildlife you should not interfere just let nature take its course I don't believe that right to me that's not a good ethics we need to change that the other the other thing is um, they ask you to to refer the the incident to an expert who can intervene in a knowledgeable way and help that animal uh, appropriately that I don't totally disagree with however what I see as problematic is that we don't even know the other species in our environment well enough to deliver first aid in a sense right we need an expert to deliver first aid now we shouldn't need that the average person I believe should know every species in their environment you know should at least be able to say that's who, this person that's this that's this say eh? you know these are the narrow leaf cottonwoods these are the plains cottonwoods this is the balsam poplar this is the brome this is the leafy spurge you know should be able to look around your environment and name those species and know something about them and sh we should be trained um, just as we train for human first aid we should be trained for the first aid of the other species are in, in our environment when we come to um, encounter them in in uh, emergency situations where they're in in desperate need of help uh, the reason I believe that we should do that I was introduced <laughs> by uh, by a, a friend of mine named Darren um, 
to this notion that one of our primary gifts as human beings, one of our evolutionary gifts, is that we are capable of helping each other and other species in those times of crisis. Um, where most other animals are, are incapable of, even though they want to intervene, there's not much that they can do physically to help other species uh, and, and themselves when they're in danger. There's a, you know, they're limited in that respect. You see lots of videos out there of, you know, an animal gets bumped on a road and another animal's trying to help it, you know. But what can they really do? They, they you know, nudge it, nudge it, nudge it, and try to shake it back to life. It's about all they can do. We have far superior abilities in that respect. And this is a this is a great thing that we can do for others is, is help them in those situations because life is precious. Um, so to kind of go through life ignorant of how to apply that ability is, very, is I, I think that's very unfortunate. In fact, I kind of, I've been imagining lately that maybe I need to produce something like a, a first aid handbook for situations that are commonly encountered with wildlife in suburban neighborhoods, you know? What if you see this, what do you do? Um, because I think we should know our, our, the other species that we coexist with and I think we should be able to help them uh, when they're in need of help. So in that respect, our regulations, while we need to have regulations, are not adequate to either the ethics that I, that I carry um, that are shaped strongly by an indigenous tradition, <laughs> um, which has should have precedent, you know, in any case over the, over the mainstream, but it doesn't matter, we're like we're going to have to come to some agreements. So moving regulations in that direction is something that I'm interested in. Um, moving education in that direction too, because it's not just the regulations, but we have to have our schools, you know, there shouldn't be kids graduating from high school that don't know their own environment. you know <laughs> anyway that's my thoughts on it we need the regulations but the regulations um, are not adequate to groom our human intelligence and spirit in the direction that needs to go